When you start to when you start to work hard, I say a little tongue sticking out. <laughs> okay. Well, anyhow, uh, let's see. Where are we? Uh, we need to uh, we need to review what we've done. Um, the project was to do open records requests to Chatham County, North Carolina. In, re in relating to sort of matters that came up at trial in April. And your attorney did not do deep, in-depth in discovery. I think that it's fair to say that, right? Uh, Very fair to say. And uh, so we, ha we have to now um, basically make up for it. Uh, and uh, we, we were, we, we've written, how many documents do you have? Uh, I'm not really sure at this point. Well, let's, let, okay, let's go over them and make sure that I've got all of them. Uh, because yeah. I, I mean, we'll, if, if we have to file suit eventually, we want to keep good trial, good, good track of what we've actually submitted here. Uh, and so I guess just start off by sending me everything that you have received, all right? Oh, oh no. I, I guess you can send it by telegram. Uh, oh, hey, Lucas is still alive. I think. hadn't heard from him in a week. Um, you still there? Yes, I am. But I'm, I'm, just gonna let I'm, me. Not, I'm not growling. That's not me. Uh, I can't. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to let me or not. What are you doing? I'm trying to get the, the stuff on here and send it to you. Oh, okay. You're, you're doing sharing multiple. Okay. I think that that should have empowered you. Are you hitting the share screen button? Hold on. Is it coming up on the screen? No, just to let me, your name, Jessica Revis. Oh. Hold on. Let me try to send it to you on Telegram. Oh, okay. Oh, where are you? Where are you? Where are you hiding? Crap, there he is. Okay. Let's see. File. Document me. Holy crap, that was not it. You couldn't share on your screen? No. That's weird. I don't know how to do that. Well, you you, you 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 hit share screen and it shows the screens that are available to you basically. Uh -huh. I mean, for example, I'll share your transcript. Can you can you now see the transcript of your trial? No. You Hold on, let me get back to your screen. Yes, I can. Let's get see it. Yes. Okay. Um yeah. We'll keep this in the background in case we want to want to look at it. Did you send me anything else? I don't really see. I mean, you know, I'm doing this on my phone. I don't have a fancy computer to do it on, so um, I don't know really. Uh, crap. Don't you know? I mean, just I thought you were going to send it to me on on Telegram. I'm trying to find it now, but uh, I can't really find it. Hold on. Damn. I don't think it actually saved on my phone.
phone. Well, so maybe you, you receive I'm gonna, them. I'm going to send it to you an email because right. that's really the only way I can do it. Sorry. No, yeah, that's fine. Okay, the first one is the last one you sent. So the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. And those in the middle are stuck there. Exactly. Since I can figure out how to freaking do it here. Forward. Okay, we've got something here. Yay. Unicorn. Okay, that's the first one. Second one. Wait, wait, wait. I haven't seen anything yet. A little smoky. Okay. Public records request received. Let's see this. Second one. Well, let's look at them. Let's look at it. This is the fifth one. Do sharing. Okay. But that, that, that yeah. was that was part of the point of, of broadcasting. It was, in fact, to uh, review everything we were looking at and discuss it. Um, Sorry. Okay. There's everything. I guess I'm assuming. Okay. You're, we're not sharing anymore, right? Yes. Okay. I should shut off. Any and all information and records relating to pro monument to pro-Confederate or pro-Southern heritage demonstrators in Pittsburgh or Chatham County in the actual or constructive possession of Chatham County, including but not limited to results of surveillance of social media or uh, any other electronic sources from January 1, 2016 through December 27, uh, 2021, please deliver in PD PDF. That was the very last one, right? Yes. Okay, so now let's. Look uh, so this that. this is very important, uh, given the fact that, uh, you know, there was a lot of um, demonstrations, I guess, or protests, or whatever you want to call them. Um, well, before I was arrested, well before I ever even entered into town. So uh, then I was accused by a Steve Manor. Uh, which is the captain of the police department of being there on uh, numerous occasions, which uh, is obviously not the case. I'd only been there one time before, and I wanted to know the inf where they get this information from. Jessica, had you been there in spirit? No, I hadn't even been there in spirit. <laughs> okay. I know that, you know, the, the two monuments, uh, Durham... And uh, and then of course Silent Sam was taken down illegally. Um, I was at the Silent Sam vigil, which that was after they had already tore it down. But it also was not in Pittsburgh, right? That's somewhere else. Yeah, in North Carolina. And so I, you know, I'd wanted to see all of them because me and a, a certain friend, we had. Uh, went to several monuments throughout Virginia, North Carolina, and we had actually did kind of like a tour, you know, recording the information off of the monuments and sharing this information because there's a lot of people that cannot see these monuments. So that's why we were um, kind of like an advocate for those who could not experience it personal. So we um, read the insignias and stuff and you know, me being uh, connected to uh, a lot of the counties in North Carolina, given that, you know, three quarters of my ancestry comes from North Carolina. Uh, I knew that when the first two came down, that there's a good possibility that I would not be able to see the others. So, you know, kind of like I was saying before, you know, you got that uh, welcome to North Carolina sign that says, hey, I've been there, you know, some of, you know, memorabilia for your own self. So that's what I wanted to do. And I had friends that was going to, you know, do like we had done prior and take the video of me there. And of course, the pictures of me there so that I could put them in my scrapbook because I have a, a very large scrapbook of, uh, you know, the monuments and all the events that I have attended doing both honor and color guard. 
Well, let's see, let me just read this one out uh, loud because that's what I wanted to do. Uh, the, I guess this is the fourth request. Uh, any and all information and records relating to my Jessica Lynn Revis attendance at other demonstrations or hearings, including but not limited to videos or photographs or testimony or memorandum of any kind as referenced on page 59, uh, 59 uh, lines 11 through 21 of the attached transcript. Let's see, do we have the attached transcript here? Yes, I have it here. So the uh, Steve Maynard, the captain of the police, said that he did not know me personally, but he had seen me on occasions here at the courthouse and some of the other demonstrations through town uh, that they had had. She had been uh, into the courthouse on some occasions dealing with the hearings and so forth of the lawsuits of whether to take down the statue or to, uh, or to, let's see, to take the statue down or not to take it down. And I was a uh, frequent attendee at the demonstrations. And the only thing that I can think of at this point is he, he must have got me confused with someone else. I know that my particular friend, uh, uh, she actually attended all of the hearings in Pittsburgh and Chatham County pertaining to the monuments. And so I had never been to any of them. Um, you know, before my arrest, I mean, I, I lived 120 miles away. So, you know, going to this, these meetings was not even feasible. And not knowing the people that were there, again, it's not feasible for me to drive all the way down there to just attend a meeting, probably at night. Um, but uh, I really feel that, you know, this obviously would prove um, this information to be false. Well, I mean, I believe that North Carolina does permit equitable bill of review. So if, if, if your conviction is not overturned, if your conviction is not overturned on appeal, uh, we could try a collateral attack. Okay. Uh, so it, it ain't over. Uh, but I mean, it, it, it is a shame that none of, the, none of this evidence came in at trial. Yeah, and I mean, I, this is my first time I've ever been arrested in my entire life. So it was kind of um, one of those things that I really didn't quite understand what I had to do or what was required of me. Um, but it, it certainly would have been, I guess, if, if I had more communication with my attorney, it probably would have helped tremendously. And, and not only that, that he would have I mean, I do understand that I'm just one of all the clients that he has, but when, you know, you don't listen to your client, it, it kind of sets you up for failure. But uh, I know that they said, um, you know, that, that, that the officer was drawn to me and, uh, and what, that he was not familiar with my name, but he was familiar with my face. And I'm still, again, only being at the, the location only one time prior um you know how would he certainly know all about me when obviously i'd never been in trouble ever or caused any kind of conflicts there prior okay now i, I see a problem here with one of them uh your signet your signature was added to a document and it's to the transcript now can you log in on your end to see to view the submission because I don't think I can log in. Uh, you don't have a passport, do you? No. In a password. So I guess you'll have to create one so that you can view this document. But I, I may I go, I'm able to look, I'm able to get into the document. I like that. As if I hadn't already seen it, but what the hell? So I'm assuming it's the second one. We only used one. We didn't. We did, We only used one transcript. I mean, it, it says your signature was successfully added to a document, which makes no sense because it wasn't. I don't see that they put it on anywhere, but they shouldn't have. So 
Maybe okay. it's just electronically. I mean, that would be the only thing I can assume. So uh, there you go. Might just send it again. I don't know if that's right, but whatever. We'll see. Um, if you tell you there's a problem, we can do it tomorrow. Right. I'm just curious what their reactions is going to be. <laughs> Again, this is they, they have a setup for doing this online at Chatham County. I told you they were going to have a FOIA officer, and I didn't realize they were going to have a FOIA, uh, you know, web, web portal. Uh, and it looks like there are two copies of the transcript. And you just sent me something else. Yeah, I guess that's the second document to the, because it came in like two. The six signature confirmation again. And I don't know why we're getting all these signature confirmations. Okay, well, the what's the next one? Well, I just want to read it. Any and all information, we, we've looked at this one before. Okay, so there's a duplicate. Okay. This is the one of... Uh, or asking for your videos or testimony of your uh, att attendance at, 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 at other demonstrations or hearings, including but not limited to videos or photos or testimony or memorandum of any kind as referenced in pictures of uh, April 20th. Any and all information relating to Antifa or persons supporting removal of Confederate monuments in Pittsburgh. Okay. Okay, so. Submission confirmation. Any and all information and or any and all records concerning me, Jessica Lynn Revis, in the actual or constructive possession of the Chatham County Sheriff's Office referenced on page 73, lines 10 through 25, page 74, lines 1 through 17, and page 75, lines 1 through 13, of the April 20th, 21 transcript attached. Any and all other information concerning Jessica Lynn Revis of any kind, please send in PDF. So, um, what if they have your whole genealogy and they send that to you? <laughs> It'd have to be several pages long. But yeah, on this particular instance, uh, they accused me of being on the social media accounts. I wasn't on any of these groups of the local uh, the monument, save the monument pages and stuff like that. So if they could actually produce a paper with my name or like some kind of social media page with my information on it, I mean, uh, you know, that's, it's impossible. And uh you know, it's I've I've been barred from using my name <laughs> off of uh, Facebook, obviously, and that's what they were referring to. And then they were talking about uh, the League of the South also on that page as well. Um, <clears throat> and I really think that because of the shirt that I was wearing, that that's where they got that information. And I do remember when I arrived the very first day, the very first time I'd ever been into Pittsburgh, uh, I know that I was invited by my state chairman. And uh, he said, you know, you need to come on down. And if you're going to see the monument, and so did my other friend, you know, if you want to see the monument, then we're going to go down there with you. We're going to be there with you and uh, make sure that you're safe. I said, okay, cool. Because they all knew, you know, um, they had had a prior uh, large demonstration that was actually permitted. And I wasn't part of that either, but uh, they knew that there was a large amount of Antifa and leftist agitators present that particular day. So uh, when was I wanted that? to- when was, when was that? When did that happen? Uh, I think in August, maybe. I'm not really sure exactly. But I know some of the you were, not, you were not there. No, I was not. I was I was working. So the first time that I'd actually attended was, I think it was either September the 28th or 29th, and uh, I didn't realize there was going to be a large crowd there. You know, of course, like I said, when I arrived, there was at least 
30 or even as high as 40 antifa quit yawning <laughs> i'm sorry it's time I'm tired okay. yeah all those antifa members left as agitators they had surrounded uh my state chairman and uh and some of the local guys that were there into a corner and i you know i didn't realize what was going on so when i pulled in they tried to block me from coming into the parking lot so when i actually forced my way in and then i parked and i remember this particular girl uh lindsay ailing um she walked straight up to me and started talking about uh my uh celtic sun wheel which you know this this symbol here i don't know if you can see it but anyway uh with that being said uh she was saying it was a nazi symbol and you know if, if that's the case then there sure is a lot of nazi symbols all over churches and stuff <laughs> because the church right down the street within a mile of my home has the same emblem on top of the steeple but well, I you're talking weird. Uh, at the cathedral here uh the cathedral uh christ church cathedral episcopal cathedral in New Orleans on St. Charles, right next to that house we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, uh, there is a, a chapel called Harris Chapel uh, that is actually named after one of my great grandfathers. Uh, and um, there's an altar of St. George, St. George the Dragon Slayer. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, St. George. His, it's really hard to know what the history is of this, but his monument, his, 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 his tunic, I believe, is covered in swastikas. Yeah, okay. In the church, in the church, in, in, in the altar, the altar of yeah. St. George. Uh, it's, it's, car, it's in wood and they're very shallow, but yeah. uh, he, he's wearing a cloak uh, and, or maybe armor of, uh, 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 em, em, emblazoned with like a couple of hundred swastikas. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing, though. You know, all the symbols and stuff like that. You know, they're all Western culture symbols, and we have proven time and time again that everything that is to deal with the Western uh, culture, the white Anglo Celts, is all uh you know subliminal of some some sorts uh antifa or all the leftist by subliminal, so subliminal bad. by subliminal you mean psychological Jungian archetypes basically oh no they have alternate meanings everything has alternate meanings all the way to the okay symbol you know oh, I mean, back that, that, when we were going to school everything was okay and now it's white power you know <laughs> so everything is you know it may seem on the face as being something, but it also has a subliminal whatever. Did <laughs> um, I, I tell you that my son, my son used to make that sign all the time, and my son who's turned against me because he doesn't like my politics, uh, and yeah, uh, he's <laughs> but he used to he used to make that white power sign all the time, uh, and uh, and he 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 when the first time he was over in in Holland. In Netherlands, he he met an English girl over there, and she was really she was really swell. I, I was hoping they'd get together, uh, but um, he he his pet name for her was Rhodesia. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I mean he he's he's gone through this radical radical Judaization, I guess you'd call it. Uh, uh, but, you know, there was a time when he and I used to agree on everything. Anyhow, all intelli the, the this is the first request we sent, I believe, all intelligence, quote unquote, received by or in the actual or constructive possession of the Chatham County Sheriff's Office concerning, quote, the League of the South between January 1, oh, I did a different date, how bizarre, I, uh, I did January 1, 2017, uh, and the present day, December 27th, 2021, all other intelligence concerning uh, Janet Spainauer Pay Pate, is that Pate or Pale? Mm, yeah. And Michael Hill in the records of the Chatham County Sheriff's Office. 
I request that all records be delivered in Adobe PDF. I just think it's going to be very interesting to see if they have anything specific on, on, on Michael Hill. Uh, well, you know, and it, it says in the transcript, it says uh, the demonstrators that were for the statue being taken down and against the statue being taken down had chatter on social media just about on a daily basis. Uh, then, of course, they ask about the League of the South post. And, of course, uh, they had intelligence pertaining to the League of the South. And what was that information that he could not recall at the time? And then he said, uh, apparently, there was 35 demonstrations on a weekly basis. And uh, all the locals seemed to say that that information was incorrect. Um but he still held true that I had been to numerous protests prior to my arrest. So again, I think that a good possibility that, well, it's, it's more than a good possibility. I'm almost positive that he, uh, he thought that I was someone else. So, uh, and so with that being said, that puts it in particular um, light, you know, well, in, other, in, other words, you, you, in other words, if, if, if you had basically, if your lawyer had cross-examined him properly, he would have been shown to be an idiot because he claimed to recognize you. And in fact, he hadn't. He right. Couldn't. I and mean, so, that, a really bad witness, in other words. Yeah. So basically what it did, it, it basically sealed my fate before I was ever even arrested. Uh, with them under the impression that I had attended any of these demonstrations or any of these so-called court uh, meetings or whatever proceedings pertaining to the monument. And then I know that there was a, a flyer that was given out, the, the, I guess it was a, a day before or something like that of my arrest, to the people that was going to these meetings. And it said in that flyer not to bring a firearm. So you know, concealed or not. And, you know, with them saying that I was present at these meetings, it basically, uh, like I said, sealed my fate because it looks like I had went to these meetings and received this flyer that was from the sheriff and I had not received it, in fact, and I had not been told about it because I was not affiliated with any of these people that were there except for uh, the two that I was waiting on to uh, go to the monument with so that basically uh, put it in as I should have known you know uh, but did they say that to trial though no that flyer never came out that's another okay, thing then, then that then 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 it didn't seal your fate because the jury never heard well, about no, it. it 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 did seal, seal my fate because he was saying that I, here I am at these uh, these meetings, and then at the meetings they were told to do certain things, and then here I am completely going against them because I was supposedly at these meetings, which is obviously not the case. I did not know. <laughs> Certainly, if I would have known, uh, then I wouldn't have been there, I guess, or I would have, I don't know, I don't know what I would have done because there's nowhere to park around the monument. So every parking spot is full and you can't really get close to the monument. And the, the other thing is all the sidewalks leading to the monument were blocked off by barricades. So the only place that I had to cross the highway was as I did, I walked past the group without looking at them, without acknowledging them or anything. And I went straight to the curb to observe where a good place to cross was. And this, of course, is past all of the uh, leftist agitators that were on the other side of the road. Well, I think we've covered it. And it's 11, almost 11 11. And so. Let me just add this. So it says, uh, okay, so they had actually, um, one of the, the same officer, he said that, you know, I'd been at the, the previous protest and that my name ha had came up in conversations and briefings and debriefs. Uh, What's the difference between a briefing and a debrief? 
I have no idea. So I guess before and after. <laughs> but uh, prior encounters, it was pertaining to the prior encounters at the other events. Um, and then, let's see, I got some more here. And then he accused me of, of chanting or whatever, and then he couldn't remember what I said. So, um, you know, a lot of this stuff is just so foolish, really. I mean, um, every single officer said that I went back to my car to retrieve something, but they they didn't see what I got or didn't see if I dropped something off or anything like that. All they know is I went back to my vehicle right before I was arrested, right before uh, they actually uh, honed in on me. And then Don't the you know one officer- Don't you know it's a crime to go to your vehicle during a demonstration? Don't you know it's a crime to go to your vehicle during a demonstration? Well, apparently, uh, which is not written, apparently under the Second Amendment of the Constitution, there's some kind of really, you know, like, you know, the, the insurance commercials, they always have that little mm -hmm. bitty writing at the very bottom that right. you can't read. You know, yeah. and at the end, he goes, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> apparently that's in there, the Second Amendment of the Constitution. It says that you, uh, as a Second Amendment uh, advocate or a concealed carry holder, uh, if, if you are already present at a location, that you have a duty to leave or vacate the area whenever someone else that has different ideologies than you do, you must immediately vacate the property. Uh, or you will be arrested. I, I mean, I, I've never seen that, but apparently that's the way it, it, it is somewhere in the Second Amendment. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, the yeah, First I, Amendment, I, you know, uh, for some odd reason, the, the First Amendment, uh, it only applies to speech that is not offensive. So if you offend someone, or someone disagrees with the what the things that you're saying, then your second or your first amendment does not apply anymore. And then for the fourteenth amendment, uh, you do you you don't really have a right to life, liberty, or property. Uh, you know when when dealing with uh, false accusations. Um, and then as far as equal protections under the law, the only time that you ever get equal protections is if you are a minority of sorts. So it doesn't apply to, uh, uh, you know, us. <laughs> so, again, this stuff Jessica. should have been ever. Jessica. Yes, dear. We are a minority now. That's true. So I want my minority benefits. I, I mean, hey, you know, I, I've gave my white privilege card away because that thing just is worthless. <laughs> but. It's just so much that is involved with this case. I mean, every single one of the officers never seen a gun. And every one of them said, well, that it was an imprint. Uh, it looked like a gun. Well, that's what a holster does. Just like I have this holster. This is similar to the holster that was there. And if you can see on there, there's an imprint of a gun. So if you have this yeah, underneath yeah. your shirt, huh? I understand it. That's it's yeah. So I just I guess, everybody else. So if you have an imprint of a firearm in there, it's gonna and it's gonna go underneath a shirt. It's gonna look like a gun in there. So uh, this is essentially what they seen is the very bottom of this holster, and that's what they uh, swore be damned was a, a gun in that holster, which obviously wasn't the case. And then when I had another person there actually testify that there was an empty holster and he said how did you know that it was an empty holster he said because when she was helping me uh put a flagpole on my truck so she had her arms raised up over her head so there was an easy way that he could see an empty holster when and that this particular testimony was never even give given thought at all all they could say was, well, I, I believed it was a, a gun in there. I thought it was a gun. It led me to believe it was a gun, but they never physically seen a gun. So basically, he just testified for nothing. But well, we shall continue, and we'll maybe tomorrow night we'll we'll meet again and see what the see what Chatham County how 
Chatham resp County responded, if they claim that you're, uh, you know, caused them intentional infliction of emotional distress or something. <laughs> I think I'm the one that, that needs to be, uh, you know, obviously emotional distress. This stuff's been going on since October 2019. And obviously it's ripped my life apart. I mean, you know, every aspect, I mean, of my life has changed dramatically. I mean, you know, down to my concealed carry permit to, uh, you know, of course I have to, uh, you know, have that burden carried on me forever. You know, when I go and, and uh, you know, attempt to try to purchase another weapon, I mean, it's on my record now. And, you know, it's a class one, which is the worst of the worst. And then the Virginia state laws are so crazy right now that it, it will probably keep me from getting another concealed carry permit. And I've had a concealed carry for 21 years and, you know, I've never had any issues before, but they sought me out. They found me and they were literally trying to destroy me because I didn't completely agree with their objectives. So. Well, this is a serious case and we got a lot to do, but not tonight. I okay, we well, go gonna... to bed, Charles. I feel like you're gonna fall over out of your chair. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Jessica. You get some.